Yankee Jim was the victim of mistaken identity. There were two criminals back in the early 1850s known by the name Yankee Jim. Both were tall, both were criminals, but one more so than the other. Nowadays, most don't know that there were two and make the same mistake the court in San Diego made all those years ago and combine the two men into one. Intrigued? Good. Now, let me tell you a story. Back in the 1850s, there was a man whose name was James Robinson. He lived kind of in the middle of nowhere and had a secret gold mine claim. It was secret, but at the same time, not. Mr. Robinson, who was known as Yankee Jim, was known to go down to a place called Barnes Barn Store, where he would show off his gold and tell stories of how well he's doing, but not disclose where he's getting it from. One day, Yankee Jim was sleeping in a bushcraft shelter when he was kicked awake by a guy named Courier, who had been looking for him to find his gold claim. They talked a little, and Jim revealed that he was, in fact, Yankee Jim. He was from Maine, and he had jumped off of a ship off the coast of California, wandered around, and came inland where he happened upon some gold. He pulled out a gun and showed Courier, who thought this was the end, and Jim proposed a deal. Go to town and buy me some bullets for this gun, and come back alone. Do this and I will show you the gold mine. Courier pretended to agree and left, thinking he'd, he'd just get shot as soon as he brought back the bullets. But he remembered the spot where he had found Jim. And soon, news spread of where Jim's place was, and people flocked up to the area searching for gold themselves. While there, they noticed a corral of horses. Some of the horses looked familiar. One guy recognized one as his own, and another the same, and soon it was revealed that all of these horses were stolen, and Yankee Jim was a thief, a horse thief. So Jim fled to San Diego, bringing along two buddies. Now, I said there were two Yankee Jims. One was the guy I was just talking about, James Robinson, a gold miner and horse thief from Maine. The other was James Knowlton, who was a robber, a murderer, a horse thief, and a gang leader. He ravaged Northern California for a while until he was finally caught and hung for his crimes. A man named Tebbets lived in Northern California during this time and heard the scary stories of this murderer, Yankee Jim. Tebbets left for San Diego before James Knowlton was caught and hung. Now, James Robinson, Yankee Jim, arrived in San Diego, which back then was a crime-ridden place like Chicago is today. The town folk was fed up and the leadership was also fed up. Yankee Jim and his buddies were welcomed into town and hung out at some bars and gambling halls, and all was well in the world. Until he mentioned, at a bar, a bar that Tebbets owned, that he was known back in NorCal as Yankee Jim. Tebbets sounded the alarm to the sheriff who put out a bolo, be on the lookout, for Yankee Jim, the murdering gang leader. One night, Yankee Jim was rowing a boat out towards a schooner and was spotted by the owner who noticed nothing else but a red shirt. Was Yankee Jim a clamper? Whatever the case, a second bolo was put out for a man in a red shirt. Soon enough, Jim asked some guy for some food and was wearing that red shirt. The man yelled and soon Yankee Jim was under arrest, vigilante style. He was lassoed and then hit on the back of the head with a shovel and taken into town to get booked. He was recognized not only as the man in a red shirt, but Yankee Jim the outlaw from up north. His buddies were arrested and questioned, and they admitted to being horse thieves and that their plan was to escape on that schooner. They probably got some sort of court deal for squealing on Yankee Jim and were given a light sentence of two years aboard the San Quentin prison ship. Yankee Jim, on the other hand, not so much. They heard the stories of the gangster from Tebbets and soon, the San Diego Herald quickly put out a story of Yankee Jim, the French Canadian who loafed around mining camps, murdering and robbing and even killing his own men, which poisoned the jury pool with false information. Now, the prosecutor of this case, coincidentally, was a guy named James W. Robinson. 
If you remember, Yankee Jim's real name was James Robinson. Anyway, he decided to defend himself, uh, defend himself, not being all too satisfied with the public defenders he was offered. The charge was attempted larceny of a schooner and also the larceny of a rowboat. The two combined became grand larceny in which the death penalty was valid. And after the case was argued, the jury deliberated, two of whom were the owners of that rowboat, and guilty as charged was the verdict. He shall hang at the neck until dead. Yankee Jim didn't know he was being identified as the other Yankee Jim and thought this whole thing was a joke, a scared straight kind of thing. So he didn't really care. By the next morning, he talked to two Catholic priests and converted to Catholicism and then changed his name to Santiago. Now he was noosed up and standing on a wagon that had a mule attached to it. The sheriff watched his pocket watch closely as Yankee Jim talked to the crowd, joking around, still thinking that this was all a joke. Then, a nod from the sheriff, a slap on the mule's butt, and Jim's last words, Am I gonna die? The wagon was kinda low, and the rope was kinda long, so his neck didn't break. And instead, he hung there and strangled for 45 minutes until he finally died. James Robinson, a.k.a. Yankee Jim, was a criminal mistaken for another criminal. Had he not been, he probably would have been sent to San Quentin like his buddies. But he was. And he was made out to be an example to the people of San Diego. That crime was no longer going to be tolerated. Even today, if you visit the grave of Yankee Jim, James Robinson, there is a plaque that talks about him. But if you look close, you'll see even in his death, his identity is mistaken. His name is listed as James W. Robinson, which was the name of the prosecutor at his trial. Shout out to Michael Stark, whose videos helped me a whole bunch in my research. Links to his videos are in the description.